Welcome back. Yes, this is a well, this is going to be a collection of videos um, of me building, painting, finishing off um, this kit. Um, we have um, reviewed it, uh, myself and Rob uh, from Frontline Model Hobbies, and so we're going to build it. Um, this actual build is going to be for uh, the IPMS Stoke show on the 28th of August 2022, and I'll pop this into um, the actual uh, competition. Now, what are, what are my local competitions? Uh, one, I don't take them that seriously. Two, I do it to have um, some fun, and if I win anything, then super duper. Um, but whenever I do a competition, I've done about three or four now, I don't expect anything. Um, I just pop it in, see what they think. If it's cool, then fantastic. Then if I win, brill. Um, I haven't won a top prize yet. Um, I've got a couple of seconds and thirds, um, and I'm absolutely happy with that it's um but yeah anyway more on that on a later video so all we're going to do now is open up the box and basically we are going to build it from scratch ah a couple of things Oop, just drop the decals um i have uh purchased a set of quinter decals um for the inside as in the uh, cockpit and that's pretty much all I'm going to be using after market majorly if you know what I mean um, I'll probably use some removable flight tags within the, the ejector seats and maybe a few other bits and pieces but um, what it's going to end up looking like at the end I don't know um, I want to weather this like like an F-14 is on a long cruise or whatever so it is going to be battered but um, but yeah more on that again later however what i am going to try and do is uh it does show you i think it does have come on Lenny, come on you can make it mate come on you can do it you can do it yes it does have some form of radar at the front so i'm thinking of maybe having that up as well um, I am going to have everything as in for the wings, all that's going to be deployed um, as in the uh, flaps, slats and everything else that goes with it. But that was all the other page. Yeah. So all this is going to be open, I may do the speed brake as well, I really don't know, one is getting bored of me already, so you probably are as well. So there you go, what I'll do is, um, the Quinter decals haven't arrived yet but will be in the next couple of days so in the meantime what i'll do i'll skip the cockpit and then what i'll do is i'll go straight into the main fuselage bit here um, for this i'll stick it on um uh speed and you can whisk through it and pause it wherever you want but i'll do a voiceover anyway to explain everything that's going along okie dokie right so Let's get set up and get started. Okay, we've got everything off the spruce, all ready to go. And the first off is doing the intakes, or the front part, shall I say. Um, you've got large uh, anchor points for these, but don't be put off by that. Um, once you pop the, the parts in, they fit really well. No issues, no gaps, no nothing. So no strokes or heart attacks. Excellent. Anyway, cracking on. Basically, you're putting on the parts for the uh, roofing, for the retracting arms, for the top air outtake uh, along with the undercarriage bay as well just make sure though you check the instructions because they are a bit vague when it comes down to the arrows pointing or where it needs to go so just bear that in mind and you can't go wrong well it's me in it anyway and don't forget to drill the holes too <clears throat> anyway bits and pieces we're just putting on the the swing uh wing part there no need to glue that um, it fits snug and you can still use them and also we're putting on the, the retractable wing glove veins again just pop them on a dab of glue how's your father not a problem <sighs> right now we've done that we can go 
a little bit slower. Oh yeah, and of course, fitting the top and bottom fuselage shards together, they fit, oh, it is amazing. Ooh, that's better. Anyway, right, what we're showing you now is basically everything that you'll need to basically put in on the inside and the outside of the front fuselage sizing, the cockpit and so on. Anyway, uh, the Quinter decals uh, have arrived and I should be showing you in a second. Come on. Oh, here we go. Um, I got these from eBay uh, for $9.99. And are they worth it? Well, we'll go through that later on the video. Anyway, quick look at them. I think that speaks for itself. Absolutely yum. I mean, double yum. In fact, I might even say yummy. Um, but anyway, um, later. Right, okay. So basically, first off, we're just putting on the bang seats together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, these come in five different bits, actually. Um, and one thing I will say to you is when you actually are gluing these together, um, glue the middle bit in between the two halves of the seat first to the actual sides of the seats. Don't do what I do or did, like I'm showing you there. <clears throat> because once you put it on, it's very, very difficult to stick on and it splays out the, uh, the size of the seats. Anyway, a wise man says, no, he's not, he's a bit of a dick, but he says, um, we make the mistake, so we don't have to. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. The actual bang seats themselves are very, very nicely detailed and you'd be hard pressed to find anything um, aftermarket wise that's any better um, if I'm completely honest with you um, it is a very very nicely detailed kit now what I'm doing here is I'm basically putting on the gun cover uh, for the outside um, of the fuselage and one thing I didn't know until <clears throat> I accidentally found it um, you can actually do the D version for this as well mm. anyway uh, front, <laughs> front undercarriage bay that's going on um, and it's just like a click fit, well, not even click fit, just push it on and it stays. Well, I've even jiggered it about and it's going nowhere. That's how good the fit of this kit is. Anyway, all I'm doing now, uh, oh yeah, um, not to bore you to death, um, I've already primed everything and I've used uh, my usual primer, which is Tamiya XF19 Sky Grey. So anyway, what I'm doing is I'm just airbrushing everything that I can see that will be black. And for that, I've used uh, Hataka's Night Black. So I've done the bang seats. Um, I've done the rear part of the, the cockpit, which I'm doing there, which will house uh, basically the mechanism for the canopy. So once I've got everything else out of the way with the black, um, maybe some, uh, I don't know, some highlighter, some pre-shading, as it were, we can actually start to crack on with the other paint, as in the light ghost grey. So speaking of the pre-shading, basically what I'm doing now is just running some black uh, over the panel lines on the, the roof or the ceiling, as it were, of the front intake, just to give it a bit more of a definition um, when you're actually putting the um, main paint on, which would be light ghost grey. Um, that will be the match for the actual undersides of the actual aircraft itself. So it's a very simple uh, technique. It just gives you a little bit more uh, sort of like depth to your kit. And there you go, that's the primer I used. And that is the Night Black from Hataka, which will be used for the bank seats and everything else that we've been painting black. Mm. Anyway, moving on, what we got here? Right, here we are, just spraying the light ghost gray uh, on the top of the intakes, or the roof of, and it is just some light coats back and forth, back and forth, until you feel that you've got enough of that black showing through. Or what you could do is, you could do what I did on the other one, is spray the inside um, of the panels. Um, so obviously the black is still showing quite starkly and you can just do again some light coats and get the effect that you're actually after. It doesn't have to be completely in your face, but I'm going for a sort of like worn look for the whole aircraft. Now with the actual intakes or the main intakes again, 
all I've done is um, uh, primed it with sky gray and what I've just shown you there is the light ghost gray and with the intakes which again are slip molded and they are very very nice um, again it's just a case of primer and shooting down a bit of the old um, traffic white um, from attacker basically going from both ends go for the first one or the first side and just spraying a downward motion and then simply just turning it around and doing the same uh, on the other end and hopefully you should get a nice even coat inside but I don't really worry about it too much because it's something that's not going to be seen as it were all the time you've got to sort of like look down look into it so you can go as far or as less as you really want with it anyway speaking of the intakes and the engines basically um what i do is a very very quick way of actually sort of like um highlighting the fan blades on the, well, the compressor blades on the actual engine now these are metallic brushes that i've used over the years and they've still got the sort of like mr hobby um sort of like buffable paint on them and i generally just go around and just highlight the actual veins or the the actual um, blades on the actual compressor so when you actually pop it in you can still see some form of sort of like of the blades instead of just being black like a black dot at the end of the intake you do have some form of definition of the actual blades being there and that's basically it that's all i do really for the intakes it's not rocket science it's not really that in depth i've just done it so it's just enough Okay, so all you need to do next is pop the actual compressor blades onto the intake, push it in, and it's a nice tight fit. But I would actually glue it because you know what's going to happen. It'll fall out and you'll get, yeah, whatever. Anyway, it is a nice fit. Uh, once it's in the actual main intakes and fitted in, it is a perfect fit. Right, decal time. Right, Quinta Studio decals. Are they worth the money? Yes. Will I buy them again? Yes. Do I think they're worth their uh, weight in gold? Yes. Um, yeah, they're exceptional. They really are. Maybe it's a little bit more pricier than, say, some other aftermarkets. Uh, stuff for cockpits, i.e. like Eddard and so forth. But they are worth the money. And yeah, I would definitely buy another set again for a kit. Anyway, to attach them, all you do is you treat them just like any other decal. And I use some micro crystal clear just to use some form of adhesive just to make sure that the decal stays on the actual kit part itself. Yeah, it's as simple as that. There's no rocket science in this whatsoever. So, cocktail stick, PVA glue, a couple of dots. And if you think you've put too much on, just simply take it off. And once you're happy, you can get the, another part of the cocktail stick and just basically spread the PVA glue over the area of where the decal is going to go. Simple. But once you're happy and you've got enough of it on, it's a simple case of very carefully using a set of tweezers or whatever you've got on hand or whatever you use and just pick it up carefully. Basically, use them exactly as you were or would any other decal in a kit. So, as you've seen, I'm just being a little bit too careful with it. I can't pick it up with the tweezers because I'm cack handed. <sighs> Come on. There you go. Nice one, mate. Right. Again, pop it on. Making sure it's in the correct place and nothing's hanging over or whatever. And just get a cotton bud or Q tip or whatever you want to call it. And just basically roll it over. Make sure it's nice and secure. And if you get any PVA glue that seeps through, then it's a simple case of rolling the cotton bud over the area and it will take it off. It's as simple as that, guys. It is that simple and it is so, so effective. So, yeah, cannot recommend these hardly enough. Right, okay, so that is basically the cockpit finished. Now, I haven't gone through absolutely everything with you because I really didn't want to bore you to death because it's the same process all the way through. Now, bearing in mind, when you're looking at what you're looking at now, please bear in mind that this is a 170 second scale kit. And the level of detail that you get from the Quinter Studio decals is absolutely exceptional. I may have said that once or twice before, but anyway, 
it is an absolute blinder of an investment. Now, you could sort of like go and get some Eddard stuff if you're happy with that, if you're more, you know, au fait with using that kind of stuff. But if you're going to use Quinta decals, you really can't go wrong. It's as simple as that. And basically what I'm doing now is just showing off the actual parts when the bang seats are actually in. And yeah, grab handles, it really sets it off. So attaching it then to the fuselage halves. Now you do get um, a couple of sort of like lugs that go into holes and it's almost a push fit. You really don't need to put glue in, but I use glue because I was a bit heavy handed and I broke off the lugs on the right side of the cockpit. So I thought I'd better glue them. So I did. But apart from that, no, you really aren't going to have that much of a problem gluing it all together. As you can see on, the, on as well on the front part there, I've glued the sort of like the firewall or the sort of like the fascia for the actual radar for the actual kit itself. So again, you're just popping it in. And again, you can just glue it around, around where the seams are and the attachment points. And I'll show you how good a fit this actually is and what Great Wall Hobby have done to actually minimize the actual sort of like parts for the seam lines, i.e. what I'm pointing there. So anyway, once that's all in and I'm happy, you can actually pop on the top combing, which eliminates the actual uh, panel line that will run from obviously vertically or horizontal, whatever you wanted to call it. But anyway, it gets rid of that. Also, when I'm pointing there, that's where the sensor will go. And also that sort of like seam there, once it's together, you cannot see it. It just looks like a panel line. So really, as long as you carefully glue it, you're not gonna have a problem. And with cleanup, it is non-existent. So anyway, I've glued it all together. Uh, the other thing I will say is the front combing, you just need to apply a little bit of pressure just so it's flushed with the rest of the kit. Now, seam lines. Now, remember I said about that little seam line there? Well, once you popped it in to the actual main fuselage, it goes. And that's it. Believe you me, once you put this front part on to the main fuselage half, okay, you'd be hard pressed to find any gaps. Okay, if you have any gaps, it'll be your own doing. And it is a very, very nice, secure, tight fit, unless you do this. Oh, yeah. Put it down, Lenny. Put it down. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, then, so just to finish off, um, just to show you, basically, there you go. That is the front fuselage on. All nice and secure and it is going to be a very very small piece of cleanup I even just turn that around and we've got that sort of like panel line there right in the middle of the screen it is just going to be a case of using what I use as a fiberglass pen just to take the remnants of the glue off and that is it absolutely fantastic unless you're one of these dickheads that actually thinks that you know these kits that don't fit very well are the exceptional ones and the ones you're always going to remember. This kit is going to be one that you do for being an absolutely banging kit. So, yeah, there you go. See you in the next video, hopefully. So, take care, have your modelling, and yeah, take care of yourselves, guys. Speak soon. Bye.